G'day, welcome back to the channel, peeps. And today I've got a very special guest or a good friend of mine, Reese, who uh, we do a little bit of work on his, his VYSS Commodore. So this is a 2003 model Commodore with an LS1 V8 in it that uh, Reese has put a, as you can see here, he's put a hairdryer on it. And uh, this thing's been straked, 38, it's been straked out 383, hasn't it, Reese? Yeah. So it's uh, now 383 cubic inches. Um, and he's uh, boosted it. So tell us a bit about what you what you did, Reese, because you've done all this work yourself, yeah, haven't you? I did everything. I fabricated the turbo manifolds, the turbo kit, uh, fully built the motor, so it's full forged bottom end. Absolutely, everything's forged. Um, all the cam upgrades, all the the rockers, push rods, everything internal to make it last. Um, and it was sort of budget build. I wanted to be a budget build, but it kind of got blown out of the water. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you sort of start chucking boost on it. Yeah, going through a few turbos. Start breaking a few things, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then it was manual, converted to Turbo 400. That's why we're here today, to pull out to rebuild it once again. Just try and beef it up a little bit for the torque that this thing's yeah. pumping out now. You got any idea roughly sort of how many horsepower slash torque you... It's built for a 1,000 horsepower, so it can handle that. Yep. But I'd say between 700 and 800 horsepower. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, well, I know, you know, my, what, what my, um, my 393 is sitting on around 520. Yeah. And I used to be able to, before you had it boosted, yeah. you, you, you know, I, I often saw you in my rear vision mirror, now it's the other way around. <laughs> Without a hairdryer on, mate, I've, I've got no hope. I've got no hope of keeping up with you. So, yeah, that yeah. certainly does, uh, certainly does add a lot of, a lot of um, torque and, and top end horsepower, I suppose. It does, yeah. But I suppose at, at some stage you'll get it. Um, you'll get it dynoed. Yeah, I'll put it on the dyno and I'll touch it up, get the max power out of it. Just got to make it more reliable to do that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think from memory, this is also you've also had it painted, haven't you? Since yeah, you got it. It's got custom pearl paint on it. Yep. It's got the big cowl on it as well. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, yep. Yep. It's not the best paint, but. Mate did it for me in exchange for the old box that we Yeah, righto, righto. So yeah, you, you, it, you really. did a train on the a trade on the paint job. That's yeah. pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what it's all about. You know, yeah. the, what my channel's about that sort of DIY sort of thing, and that, that's the way to go about it. So yeah, nice. And and what have you done on the internals? Anything? Oh yeah, you've got a yeah. B and M shifter there. I see. Yep. So I got the got the shifter in it, the gate shifter. I've put all leather interior in it. It was cloth before. Yeah, right. Change that over. Put a couple gauges. Yeah, nice. Fire extinguisher because it caught on fire last time. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was yeah. a bloody hose off the turbo or something, wasn't it? Uh, oh, well, the oil feed came off once and it ruined one of the turbos. And then when I did a big burnout one time, um, some oil from the No, started. no, you didn't do burnouts. It was <laughs> just when you sort of, you know, accelerated heavily yeah. at one point. We don't it's do all burnouts. On track. All on track. <laughs> oh yeah, well out on your farm where yeah. you, your uncle's got that. Oh yeah, got that skid pan, yeah. which is pretty handy. It's a lot of fun out there. It is. On, yeah. on Right, mate. Well, uh, yeah. So as Reece said, we're we're about to we're going to pull the TH four hundred out of this today. Reese is getting that built to um, strengthen that up a bit and put up with his new um, power levels in this thing. So we're going to get a bit of fully footage of us pulling that out. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, what I've done is I actually took my ramps apart from my house and we've chucked them on a trailer and I'm just uh, lending lending them to Reese to do this work on his Commodore because it's just a lot easier. Uh, to obviously work on cars when you're, when you're nice and high on some ramps. So this is one good thing about these DIY ramps. Um, if anyone's interested in building these, you can hit me up and I can uh, give you the specs and stuff like that on how to build these if there's anyone out there that's uh, keen to build their own set of ramps. Uh, these are the stands that I fabricated for the ramps. This is just uh, like 8mm C channel and some 100 by 100 6mm uh, box. And then, believe it or not, that is just some uh, round, it's just a, a crowbar, actually, that I've uh, chopped up. I drilled some holes through the C-channel, 
plug it through and then just plug welded it on both stands. So pretty simple, but very effective. Okay, we're gonna throw the I'm gonna throw the crummy door up on here now. Dare I say crummy door? <laughs> I drive a Ford, but I'm an appreciator of muscle cars. Doesn't matter what it is. That was a beautiful thing to watch you get that up there then, Reese. Okay, so now we just gotta jack this back. We've got this crossbar that runs under the back of the ramps, it's a 65 by 50 by 4 mil thick box. Just put a flat shop jack straight under, and then we can pump the back of the vehicle up on the ramps. <laughs> Keep it in your tow bar, buddy plug in there. And Ure up she rises. Like you in the morning, Reese, when you first wake up, mate. <laughs> Unlike us old blokes, that just doesn't happen to anymore. Actually, we'll take these um, take these extensions off. Yeah, that's it. It's just bloody adding weight for no good reason. So just let me know when it looks level. Happy with that? And that, folks, is as simple as it gets. And we just throw some stands in. Uh, these stands here will just go in under the ends of the ramps. And you've got ample space now to work on your vehicle. It's bloody beautiful. So, Reese, you've uh, taken your trans out a couple of times, so you know the procedure. So, what, yep. what are we going to be doing here? What's the order of doing things to get this trans out? So, what we're going to do, we'll keep it simple. Just take the tail shaft flange off the diff, take the center bearing out and slide it back what, 30, 30 centimetres or so. Um, that frees that up, sit that on the exhaust, don't have to take it fully out. Then all we have left is four trans mounts, three torque converter bolts. Okay. And I've got three bell housing bolts because one's not in there at the moment, it's supposed to have four. Right. Um, so six bolts there. Well, they over engine near these things anyway, don't they? they? Do, yeah. <laughs> That's why, why would you need four bolts in a bell housing? That's, that's outrageous. That's why the bell housing has been welded before, I'd say. <laughs> uh, and then two lines, four lines, and it's out. Right. And the shifter linkage. It's really easy, actually. I just can't wait to... I, I can't wait, mate, to get covered in transmission fluid. Yeah. Oh, we've got a drain too. That'll help. Yeah, so that trans sump plug, mate, looks like it's about a, a 19. What, what have you given me, a 19? Yeah. I reckon we can make one there. All right. Oh, it gives a 21. I know you're used to your Imperial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true that. And that you know, would help if you actually... Oh, it's got one of those, right? Yeah, that's it, mate. Oh, wow, that was loose. Yeah, nice. And loose as a goose, mate. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. All right, you've got a, you've got a catch bucket. So yeah, we're just going to drain the fluid from the trans, obviously, before we remove it. See how black it is. Well, hopefully it's not burnt. Well, I'm expecting it to be. You got a you got a shop rag or something? So I will get shit all over me here for sure. So I'm just giving Reese a hand with this because he's uh he popped his shoulder a couple of weeks ago because he he thinks he's still 16 years old <laughs> on a push bike jump. Came off and broke his collarbone. That's up. why I'm lying under a Holden. <sighs> What's this thing sticking out the bloody top here? It looks like there's a the, bit of pipe here or something. Yeah, that's where the tail shaft loop was. Oh, like yeah, right. When okay. You go to competitions. I've yep. still got a welder back on, but that's what fell and hit me in the head and split my face open last time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's very dangerous working on cars, yeah. guys. Right, we'll just let this drain, we'll go to the next step. So while that trans is uh, draining, we're going to take the uh, tail shaft flange off here at the back now, in with the diff. So what is it, four bolts, Reese? Yeah, it's just four bolts. Yeah, right, same, uh, we'll as, same as my, I, I converted mine over to a EL, set up on my 69 Falcon, so yeah, it's very similar. 
Okay, so that's two out. We've got to jack the car up now and uh, turn the rear wheel so we can bring those two bolts up the top there down the bottom because I'm not going to uh, sit under here while the car is suspended on a jack. So I'm going to do that, then drop back down on the ramps, get them out. Yeah, so we're just doing the... We decided to do a good old boys lift the back of the car up <laughs> with the engine crane off the uh, tow ball. This is certainly one way of doing it, Reese. Do what you gotta do. Just gonna bring those bolts around to the bottom so I can get to them. Yeah. Alright, beautiful. So the bolts are undone out of the rear part of our tail shaft here where it goes into the diff. So I've got to slide this slightly forward. Oh, yeah. And then what goes over to the left? Kick it that way and then we're going to do the mount and we can slide it all the way. Uh, what's it hitting on? You just got to push the flange to clear the diff. Yeah, there, like that. Is that enough? Is that enough? Yeah, leave it like that. Well, that's enough. And then we can slide it back in a minute. Right, okay. So then we're gonna, I've got to undo this yeah. bearing mount here, don't I? That holds your centre. Yeah, 210. Actually, there's four nuts on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And what, you made this mount up, did you? No, so the holes that are in front of it. Oh, where yeah. It originally goes. Yeah, right. Eh? Yep. But I was splitting the, the bearing too much, so I just mounted it a bit further back. Right, okay. I've got the custom shaft built on the front. Okay, so okay. So it's the correct length and not split anymore. Right. Very good. All right, so we just, all right, we'll get these undone. So these are 10 mil, are they? Yeah. Right, it's a job to get this off. Yeah. Oh, a bit of Loctite on them as well. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I think I Loctite everything last time because I didn't think it was coming apart. Oh, I see. You've got them double nutted. Yeah. Just to make sure it doesn't fall. Right, yeah, here we go. Okay, and this guy, okay, now what do we do, Reese? Get those nuts. The nuts are off? Yeah, they're off, I'll just, we'll just collect the nuts. Okay, so now I've just got to basically pull this tail shaft out of the trans, uh, which we're about to do now, and that's the procedure for clearing that tail shaft out of the transmission. So let's see what chaos and mayhem. Oh yeah, it's coming out. Chaos and mayhem. You right? Yeah, slide it back. Right. Hang on, hang on. I'll try and grab it in here so it doesn't just fall. Nah. What's it hidden on? It's not quite there. Oh, there it is. She's out. Yeah. See ya. Need to go further? No. Nah. Sure. Well, does that? Well, we've got to take that trans mount off too, don't we? Uh, it, easily. It clears. It's clear, and it's sitting on that cable. What is that cable? That's the shifter cable. Oh right, oh, we don't want to. Yeah, go forward a little bit. Yep. Now we can go back a little bit more. Yep, that's good. That's good. Yep, that's perfect. I'll just get it off that cable. Right, eh? That's it, mate. A bit of, let's put a rag under where that's dripping. Right, so then what are we got to do next, mate? Take the cable off. Yep. Take the trans lines off. Oh, yeah, the cooler lines. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And then um, torque converter. you got to take the starter motor out a little bit and push it towards the front of the car to get to the converter bolts. Yep. And then bellows and bolts and mount. Right. So I've just connected the shifter cable bracket there off the... Off the trance, and now we're just going to move these converter bolts. There we go, into the free air. All right, I'll tell you when, mate. A little bit more. Right, uh, yep, all right. Uh, yeah, I might have to come back down a little bit. Have you used this? Yeah, it's 
out battery there. ratchet before, or yeah. it's probably just going to come back down a bit. Right, I stop there. I might have used the wobble on it though. Yeah, you must have, because I can't get that square on the way that it is like that. I know you use a lot of Loctite on it, so uh, good luck. Yeah, well, that's not going to do that. I'll probably just have to get it off by hand. I'll probably just have to. You're good at that. <coughs> All right, I shall remove this by hand. So I'm going to let you peeps use your imagination on that one. Ready for the next converter bolt. So we just had to uh, basically disconnect the starter motor, push it out of the way. And then Reese is just sort of cranking on the, he's got a, he's got a pry bar on the crank bolt and he's just turning the converter, turning the whole crank around to get the flex plate and the converter bolts where we can undo them a little bit more. Right, hang on. Yeah, a little bit higher please, mate. Hold it there. Yep. Uh, yeah, that'll be good. So that's the procedure that we're doing for this at present. All right, so we're just going to remove these cooler lines now. We're just going to, I'm just undoing these hose clamps. We'll pull these cooler lines off. This is Reese's uh, custom dipstick tube, I suppose, for one of a better road. That's just a press fit that just pulls out. And then we've got this vacuum line off the modulator here. Oh, yeah, that just comes off. You reckon this just pulls out? Yeah, it will just pull out. Oh! Might have to give it a tug to the top. Yeah. You'd be good at pulling things, yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> Never met a bloke that's not good at it. Righto. Uh, It'll come out when the box comes down. Yeah, right. I know as well. I'll just get these hoses off. So we're up to taking the uh, transmission mount off now. So it's two bolts aside, two there, and two there. And we're going to take this mount off next, and then we're just going to let the... Uh, Trans sit back on the engine mounts, and then I've got to get the bell housing bolts undone. Which thankfully, uh, Reese has only put how many's in it? Three, only three in it. So, uh, yeah, normally there's four, and he was planning to put the fourth in on a hoist, but the transmission pooed its pants before he had a chance to get the fourth one in. So, I'm gonna I'll, I'll take that as a win, only having to take three bell housing bolts out. So We'll get this uh, trans mount off now, and then we'll get into the bell housing. Right, well, we've got the uh, we got two of the four trans mounts off. So here we go with these guys, and it's going to go. Reese has assured me that this is going to come off with a bit of a twang. Here you go, old mate. Right, eh? Getting out of the way here. That's not too bad, Reese, unless it's hooked on something. Doesn't look to be. It's saturated on that one a bit. All right, what size are these center ones on the... I think they're 15. ...on that mount? Do they look the 16 bit? Uh, they might be right. I'm going to check it first because otherwise I don't want to strip them. No, they're 16s. There you go. I planned that. Oh, 100%, mate. Now, I don't want that falling on my face like it happened to you, mate. Right here. Okay, so now I've, got, now I've got to get these bell housing bolts in here. Oh, yeah, right. So that's the stud above that, is it? That, that so you guide it onto when you yeah. first mount it. There's a stud there's above that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so there's, there's the one on the top there, one on the top of the stud, one on the bottom of the stud. And there's only one on the bottom. Oh, right, right. All right, so... Yeah, the bolts that are going to be... What am I doing here? Can anyone actually see this? I need a light. I need a lighting man. I shouldn't be having to try and do this and hold the lights. So there are our bolts up the top there. Right. Well, we'll get them out. I'm going to stop filming while I get these out. But we'll have to get the jack and everything under here first, right? That'll yep. all have to be put underneath first and set up. Yep. 
All right, I'll go and set the jack up with the uh, trans platform. So what I've made up here for when I was pulling my uh, transmission out, and I brought this over to, to give Reese a hand, is I've just I've just built a little a little trolley that my uh, shop jack sits on, and then uh, we've got this transmission, a platform to help get the trans out because you can angle it to help get your bell housing undone a little bit easier. And uh, we'll just put these. This makes it totally movable under the car. So we'll be uh, putting this all together shortly. All right, so this is the little uh, setup. A little bit of a wild setup on our trans removal platform. Yeah, that's going back up. Yeah, that's it, Reese. I suppose when it starts lifting the car up, we'll know that it's gone to its limit. Well, you're going to have to get the bell and bolts too. It's going to get too high. Hang on, just go a little bit more. I just want to see if the chassis going up. No, it's still just the trans. Oh. Right. Yeah, I just need to see if I can actually uh, get to those bloody bolts. Put this light back on. Oh yeah, I can still get them. What do you use? Have you got a, like an extension and a uni or something on an extension? Right there. Right. You've got them prepared earlier. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll take that. All right, guys. I'm going to stop filming now. It's just a matter of getting those. Bell housing bolts out, and you, you'll need an extension and a uni on an extension to get them out successfully. Okay, bell housing bolts are out, and we are now manipulating this uh, TH400 out of its lair. Right, uh, oh, 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 oh. All right, let me have a look. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah, that's all there. Yep. Yeah, drop it a little bit. Yeah, right, hang on. Just got to make sure it's clear this end. Yeah, keep going. Right out, now we can come forward a bit there. It may tilt, hang on. Is it rubbing on the exhaust at the front? No. Nah. It is. Is it? Right out. Well, it's just, it's just, well, it's actually touching on the back. Yeah, so it's, it's touching on the back exhaust here as well, mate. It's going to tilt all the way forward because of the weight of the converter. Yep. You might just have to get ready to catch back in before it falls. Oh, great. All right, hang on. I'll better put the, I'll, I'll put this camera down to do this because I'll need both yeah, hands. Yeah. So this is where we're at, peeps. Just got to manipulate this out now and then uh, she's out. Right, hey, guys. We've got the camera on a tripod. Right, hang on. I'll just chuck my gloves on. Sort of jam myself too bad. It's basically your output shaft here. Is hitting on the um on one of your one of your exhausts. It's rubbing on it. So is the front actually on that? The front's on the crossover exhaust. Yeah, right. And the back's on it as well. Yeah. So just I'll just sort of manipulate it. All right, I'll come down. Uh, Slowly. It'll... Yep. 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 Right. You clear at the back. That's, just, that's all we got. That's as far down we can go. Oh shit. We could carefully slide it off the little trolley here. I'll have to like hold the trans. Mm. You're not keen, are you? Now, because that converter will fall out, won't it? I'm not worried about that. That's getting thrown in the bin. Yeah, righto. That's going to be a bit hard to one in, but you know. Yeah, you'll lose a bit of fluid out of that stall. Well, it just Can depends. We go backwards a little bit? No, you can't. Hard against that. Well, hard against this. Um, yeah, you're hard against the rear pipe here, mate. So you can't, I can't go back. What's that hitting on? The um, crossover. So the stall is hitting on that as well, is it? Yeah. So the bell housing and the converter is hitting on this crossover. Yeah, right. It's yeah. just a little bit high with this bloody setup. Um, yeah, because your car's pretty low too, isn't it, to start yeah, with? Yeah. It's literally an inch <laughs> at, the, at the bell housing that needs to go down. Yeah, it is. It well, is. Well, what we could do... Is tilt the back end up. We can. We could, we could if we spin it. If we try and spin it this way, this is a fair bit higher, I reckon. Oh shit! There you go. Now I can get the converter out. <laughs> Maybe. Well, with a bit of manipulating, and uh, we're very good at manipulating things, we were able to get that trans out from under Reese's car. Now, when I've pulled transes out of my car uh, on this same ramp setup, I don't have that issue, but. 
Um, Reese's car is quite a bit lower than my old Falcon, so um, a lot less. Yeah, just means the car was sitting lower to start with, to, as far as clearance for the transmission goes. But we did get it out. We just had to, we just had to persevere, which we've done, and it's out. So that's it, guys. That is the TH400 out to be sent off and rebuilt um, to take the grunt that the Commodore is subjecting the TH400 to. So thanks for tuning in, peeps. And you know what I always say? Stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.